Hey guys, this is Drew with Akusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be sharing uh, another CAC order that we have going out. Um, pretty interesting story behind these coins. Hopefully they do CAC, but can't wait to show you guys. Let's get started. The first coin I want to show you guys in today's video is uh, a really nice peace dollar and the way we actually found this coin was uh, Drew was on eBay uh, he spent many many hours I think I spent like three or four hours on eBay looking for stuff typing in random search terms everything like that um, but we ended up coming across this beautiful 1922 Denver uh, peace dollar graded MS66 plus by PCGS and uh, it was relatively cheap um, we saw it on there for fifty two hundred dollars um, and so we we bought it because we thought it was undervalued. Um, current comps are pretty high on them. Um, I think the past three sales in a PCGS holder were 8,700, 7,700, and 7,200. Uh, two of those were cacked, um, and one of them wasn't. So that's something um, that we had to take into account when we were going to send this to CAC. Um, this is why it's in this order. Um, but we bought the coin, and the guy said, um, "Hey, you know, do you want to just do it off of eBay, and I can." bring the coin to you and I didn't know uh, why he would do that but he wanted to save some money in the end because they tr eBay charges so much money um, but he drove it to our house um, we made the deal uh, with cash and now we have the coin I think we ended up paying forty nine hundred dollars for the coin so we're hoping this coin cacks um, it's a really nice coin um, but let me actually pick it up tell you guys a little bit about it um, it's a pretty neat uh, piece uh, the, when you take a look at the obverse here, you can kind of see some color, um, which I enjoy about the coin. I don't see too many uh, this high grade with color. Uh, you can kind of see some on the rim and covering the obverse of the coin. Um, and it's a pretty problem-free obverse. I don't see too many hits on it. Um, Luster's pretty nice as well. Uh, not really as nice as those blast white ones, but that's kind of a concern I have um, if it had a chance at upgrading. Uh, but when you flip over the coin... Um, there's a little touch on the eagle there, um, which is pretty hard to see in the video, um, but there also still is that color going around the coin. Um, just a really well-struck, um, well-rounded coin. Very, uh, very happy with this coin. Uh, can't wait to see what happens with it, uh, but we'll keep you guys updated on this one. The next coin I want to show you guys is this beautiful 1929 uh, Standing Liberty Quarter. It was great AU58 full head by PCGS. Um, the reason why I like this coin so much is because it really has uh, mint state luster. When you start to, uh, you know, kind of move it around in a circle, you kind of see that, um, you know, the luster is just very nice on the coin. It does have some toning on the obverse. Um, and so uh, the reason why I actually bought this coin and the reason why we're sending it to CAC is because I feel like the coin can AU58 plus full head. And that would be uh, the first one ever to AU58 plus full head um, from 1929. So it's something that I want to shoot for on an everyman set. Uh, but when you flip over the coin, uh, you can kind of see the same uh, same things on the back here. A little bit more circulation underneath the eagle is where you normally see most of the circulation. Um, but there is some toning up by United States. Um, the only major issue for me on this coin is there's a small scratch uh, right where it says, uh, you know, right where quarter is kind of. Um, I'll pull up a tribute to show you guys, but I'm interested to see what he has to say. Uh, I do like the coin, and I think it might have a shot at plus. Please play, pray for this coin. The next coin I want to show you guys is uh, another tough coin, a coin you don't see every day. Uh, it's another condition rarity uh, coin, which means that you know the higher, uh, you know, the better condition it is, the more expensive it's going to be. It's not really too expensive of a coin if it's like a mint state 63, 64, 65. But this Walking Liberty half dollar is graded MS66 plus. Um, it's a 1944S, um, and, you know, the luster, as you're going to see on many of these coins, um, especially with, you know, the especially with the peace dollar just like this one, the luster is going to be very nice. The details are going to be very nice. Um, the reason why I'm saying this coin in as well is because with a CAC sticker, it sells for a little bit more, which is what you always kind of want to go for on the bigger coins. A lot of the bigger collectors like the CAC sticker on there, and they end up doing better at auction. So that's something that we talked about in our previous CAC video. You can check that one down in our description below. Uh, but when you take a look at the obverse here, you can kind of see um, a few dots off to the right on the obverse, um, which is kind of an issue for me. Um, the strike is pretty weak, as most 1944 S's are when I was taking a look um, and trying to compare this one. 
Uh, but not, not many other issues in that. Uh, a little bit of toning down by the date there. Uh, but when you flip it over, I don't see very many issues at all on the reverse. Um, the strike seems pretty nice. Um, there is a little bit of toning on it. But other than that, like I think that's the only problem is really on the obverse. So if this coin cacks, um, it's going to be a, a big win for us. Hey guys, we hope you're enjoying today's video so far. You know, you guys, uh, you know, we got we got peace dollars, standing liberty quarters. I mean, we got Morgan dollars, Ike dollars, uh, Buffalo nickels, commemoratives. I mean, so many interesting things in this video. We hope you guys are enjoying it so far. If you are, please leave a like button. Uh, we are. We need it. We want to uh, reach as many numismatists as possible. Comment your thoughts down below. What's your favorite coin? We still have a few more to show you guys. And subscribe if you're new. New videos every week. We really want to uh, show you guys everything that we're going through, working on, because you guys are a part of our community and we are so lucky to have you. But let's get back to today's video. We're going to rapid fire through a few of these coins for you because we've shown you guys them a few times, but uh, we want to tell you guys that we're sending them off because it is important to tell you, you know, what we're, what we're working on, what we're trying to achieve. Uh, first up, we have this 1925S uh, California, you guys have seen in a few videos, has some really nice color over the prospector here. Um, there is a light grays down by the date to the left of him. Uh, I really love the coin. It is in my personal collection, and uh, let's hope it uh, cacks. So when we go to reconsider it, which is the ultimate goal, it might have a chance at upgrading. Uh, when you flip over the coin, uh, you, there's no really problems that I could see on the reverse. It's kind of hard to tell with that busy design, uh, but there is some nice blue gradual toning down by uh, the rim, uh, just covering the United States of America pretty well. But love the coin. Uh, let me show you guys a few others here that we kind of uh, shown off a few times. Uh, nice 1937 D Buffalo nickel graded MS 65 by NGC. Uh, you know, nice kind of bullseye toning on the obverse here. Enjoy the color a lot. It's much better in hand than even in the video. Um, so I like the coin, but uh, when you flip it over, it has the same kind of mirror in terms of uh, its color. Um, you can kind of see a bullseye brown going into a blue, going into a red. Um, but like this coin a lot. Um, I can't wait to see what he says. There is a big scratch on uh, the leg. Um, if you guys take a look at the reverse pretty well, that's my main concern with this coin. I'm not sure if it will cack, but always good to give it a shot, especially if it's sitting in your personal collection and you want to, uh, you know, just to make sure to dot every T and, uh, you know, check every I. I don't even know if that's a saying. But uh, the last Buffalo nickel we want to show you is this 1937 uh, graded MS66 by NGC. Um, really nice blue and red on the obverse here. A little bit of brown down by the date. Um, luster on this coin is very nice. Um, I could see this coin in a, in a better grade, to be honest. Um, but, you know, I like the coin for my personal collection. It really does fill the hole. Uh, when you flip over the coin, uh, it's going to have the same story, just like the obverse. Um, it has some really uh, vibrant blues and a little bit of red in the center. Um, I do think this one's going to cack, but you never know. Sometimes you're wrong. Um, so that's it for the kind of uh, the ones that are a little bit more redundant. Let's go back to a few that you guys haven't seen. For the rest of the video, we're going to show you guys coins um, from friends that want us to submit a few things. Sometimes the CAC process to apply um, is a little bit longer, and they haven't really um, sent in too many coins, but when you kind of send them in all together, it saves a little bit of money for you. Uh, the first one we want to show you guys is this nice 1844, I'm sorry, 1884 Morgan Dollar graded MS63 by PCGS. Um, it has really nice reverse color. Um, that's why it was mounted on the reverse here uh, when it was put in the holder. Um, it has some nice greens, reds, um, you know, a little bit of ter a little terminal for me. Um, something that I really wouldn't send into CAC, but Tyler thinks that it might have a shot. It's good to try anyway. Uh, but when you flip over the coin, uh, you know, there's a, a few hits on the reverse here, but you can, or on the obverse here, you guys can see. Uh, but it is MS63, like we've been talking about. Um, and he has this kind of in uh, the personal set for now until he has a buyer for it. So uh, while, while it's sitting with me, we wanted to see if it would cack. Um, let me know what you guys' opinion on this one is below. Last cack video, we actually made a kind of interesting skit about cacking certain things. You know, we cacked Dr. Pepper and a lawnmower and didn't cack a Buick because Buicks are garbage. You're welcome, don't buy a Buick. But what makes your life special? What would you cack in your life? Do you like steaks? Do you like golf? Um, you know... Tell us that down below. What's your hobbies that other than coins? Because it's interesting to know you guys a little bit further. Um, start to just 
know you on a more personal level. Like I said, though, leave that comment below. It'll be interesting to read them. Um, we also, we were talking with Trent past video. Um, he had a few coins that we gave back to him. Um, that was from CAC. Um, and he wanted us to send in a few more this video. Uh, actually, in this submission. Uh, so a few ones here we're going to share. Um, but the one that I enjoy most from the ones he, he gave me was his 1973S uh, Eisenhower dollar. Um, it is silver. Um, it's graded MS68 by PCGS. The reason why I like this coin so much is because of the condition of the coin. Um, you know, they're pretty relatively new. Um, there's a lot of these that were made. Um, but the condition of this coin is so nice that I really do like it a lot just because it kind of encapsulates the design fully. You know, the more perfect the coin is, uh, the more you kind of enjoy it. Uh, but it has some interesting toning um, when you take a look at it. Kind of have like a yellowish toning. Uh, I don't see too many issues with the coin. Um, it is mint state 68, but you never know what John will think about it. Um, but I do like this coin a lot, and I hope it cacks for Trent. Now we're going to rapid fire through a few more coins here today from Trent. Um, here is a 1910 Barber Dime, uh, graded Proof 64 by PCGS. I actually sold this to him a while back. I bought this one at um, the Pan Show. Uh, the reason why I like this coin a lot is because it has some interesting blues and reds on the obverse of the coin. Uh, it still has a really nice proof look to it. Um, I'm not too sure what John will think of the color, but when you flip over the coin, it has that same, uh, you know, with most of these coins you'll see, uh, it has the same kind of trend. An interesting blue and uh, red. Um, still has that interesting kind of proof look to it. So, uh, you know, a nice coin. It might cack, it might not. Uh, I'm kind of on the edge with this one. I am not a barber fan and I'm not a barber expert, but Trent, like I said, he, he really enjoys them. He understands originality on barbers. Um, so we're sending a few in. Uh, we got a few things here that you can you can watch out for. Um, a lot of them are circulated. Um, a lot of them still have that original kind of color to them. Um, some that you actually buy, you know, people want like this blast white effect on a coin. Um, but sometimes when you're looking at an original coin, especially circulated, uh, also mint state, um, most of them are going to look like they're a little bit dusty or grungy um, and not very the most attractive coin not super blast white like Morgan's are um, so with barbers you kind of have to watch out for the more original things something that hasn't had chemical on it something that hasn't been brushed up something that hasn't had old cleaning on it so um, most of these barbers have that um, the thing that I like most about them is just be is just that they have that nice original look um, they're all circulated uh, something kind of for an every everyday collector um, and most of these are going to be pretty hard to find like Trent was talking about in the past video um, Just not an everyday find um, so when Trent finds cool stuff like this um, He does want this sent out to CAC because um, John's opinion is very important on these um, and with Trent's kind of his current collectability or what he likes to collect um, He really wants CAC approved coins because that really just demands the most premium and it really uh, They deserve to have the CAC sticker to be in his set because he really just is a professional at, at trying to find the best barbers for him and also find the best coins for his uh, his customers. So that wraps up our coin portion of the video. If you guys want to watch how we package coins uh, correctly, how we secure them the most, uh, make sure to watch to the end of the video. It helps us kind of protect our package for our customers, protects the funds that you guys give us. Um, and it's, you know, it's just something that you guys could use on an everyday thing when you're starting to send coins to your customers. But let's roll that clip and uh, enjoy. Hey guys, want to take a quick break in this video to show you how we package up coins. Um, as you can take a look from over here, we got a few that are lined up, all with uh, their complimentary uh, silver war nickels here. Um, but, you know, Miss Deborah, Gary, Thomas, Ken, thank you guys. Uh, but as you can see, uh, by the packaging, you know, you, we're going to package it tight, tape it all the way around, and then we're going to kind of have this outer tape bubble here. And the way that you kind of do that is you just take a piece of tape, you fold that sucker over, and then you just put it on the package. And the way we kind of finish it off is we grab one of these, put that sucker in there, set that down real quick. Fold Ken's over twice. We're going to set that in there, right but next to the coin. And then we fold it over. So why'd you put the tape bubble on it? So the reason why I put the tape bubble on the coin 
is so, uh, you know, when you're putting it inside uh, the package, um, it's going to stay kind of firm and it's not going to move around too much. Sometimes when like uh, a newer person sending out coins, they would forget that bubble and or they would forget uh, just wrapping the coins in general and they would just be shifting all around inside the package. And that's something you just don't want. So keeping a package like this nice and tight and then also having that tape kind of hold it to the, uh, the wall of the package, that really helps. And then also, you know, putting those complimentary war nickels in there uh, always helps. So if you guys are interested in coins, uh, visit our website, AcousticCollectibles.com. Get a free war nickel with your purchase. Here's our labels that we don't want you to see, but they're all thermal printed. Uh, we're just going to take Ken's off real quick um, and show you guys, you know, slap that sucker on there. Boom. You know, and uh, once that's done, we just confirm the address and then we go scan it in at the post office. Another thing you should realize is that until they actually scan it in with a physical person, it's not actually covered under insurance if you're going to insure a coin. And they're not going to actually recognize that they have the package until someone physically scans it in. So whenever you're shipping packages like this um, with high valuable coins, I would definitely go to the counter and have them scan it in no matter what, um, just because it's going to make sure your coins are safe. Why do we use thermal labels? And the reason why we use thermal labels is because it saves us so much time. All we have to do is just get their address, uh, buy that, and then it sends it right to the thermal printer. It prints out. You can take it right off the back and, and put it on there. And even if this is like dropped in water or anything, um, the label is going to stay on there. So, uh, you know, just a really good product to have if you're going to send out a bunch of coins or anything in general. So very thankful for that. Why do we use a third party insurer? The reason why we use a third party insurer is because um, USPS doesn't actually cover um, coins or, or bullion. Um, you could say, uh, you know, under an insurance, like it's a, you know, maybe like an NFL coin or something like that. We don't do that personally. We have uh, an independent insurer. So whenever we send out a coin, um, it's actually fully insured. And the reason why we do that is because we want your money to be secure. Uh, we want you guys to have faith that if something happens to your package, your money will be reimbursed in full. And that's just how you run kind of an ethical coin business on terms of shipping. Why do you pay for postage at the home? I pay for postage here because it ends up being like, you know, if you're sending a first class mail package, it's like, you know, it could be 70, 80 cents cheaper than dropping it off at the uh, post office. You know, I think the post office charges you anywhere between four dollars and four dollars and fifty cents. Sometimes five bucks. For us, we pay like three thirty to like three eighty, depending on the weight of the package. So that's something that's also good to know. Uh, you know, saves us money every single time we ship anything out. Does it save you time as well? It saves me time, just so I don't. You know, when I wait in line, I'm not. I'm just gonna wait to scan it in. I'm not gonna wait to give them little, you know, addresses and have them put the stamps on there and. You know, you end up cutting your time in the post office down dramatically. How many packages have you shipped out at one time before? I think we've shipped out like, uh, I think like 30, 35 packages in one day. So they were very happy to see me. But, uh, you know, it's a part of it's the way it goes. And uh, I think we had like a long week out. We were in like Pennsylvania or something. And uh, I was selling stuff on the way home. And so when I got home, I had to get all that ready on Sunday and have it ready for Monday. Yeah. Did you guys enjoy today's video? If you did enjoy it, you know, all this, all these coins, beautiful coins, uh, interesting commentary, hey, and uh, a little bit of extra at the end, make sure to hit that like button. Uh, comment your thoughts down below about CAC, about the coins that we're sending in. Uh, we would love your perspective. And subscribe if you're new. New videos every week. We want to give you our insight. We will see you guys in the next video.